Welcome back to part two of my consideration of Jonathan Wells's icons of evolution. The fourth icon is Heckel's embryo drawings, uh, which purport to show that vertebrates are very similar as early embryos, and therefore this provides evidence for common ancestry. But in fact, the embryos are not similar, and Heckel faked the drawings. Since up to this point, the video has not put much fodder for rebuttal into the video presentation. Basically, just statements as to what Wells considers fails by evolutionary proponents. I will say this. Evolutionary theory, as proposed by Darwin in Origin of the Species, written in 1859, is not founded in Haeckel's observations or theories. His book, which was published in 1866, General Morphology of Organisms, nor his diagrams, which were published in 1874. Haeckel did not have any significant input into origin, but Darwin, among others, did profoundly influence Haeckel. Haeckel's work, Recapitulation Theory, was basically discredited in the 19th century and has not been relevant to biology since that time. Now, for shits and giggles in the show notes, I suggest taking a gander at Tony Reed's video, How Creationism Taught Me Real Science, number 43, Haeckel's Embryos. Also for shits and giggles, there is an article by P.Z. Myers entitled Wells and Haeckel's Embryos, a review of chapter 5 of Icons of Evolution, and that's specifically geared to the book. Uh, the fifth icon that I wrote about was Archaeopteryx, a famous fossil of a, an ancient bird that had a long tail and teeth in its beak like reptiles and for a long time was thought to be the missing link between reptiles and birds. Uh, biologists no longer think that because there are too many differences between Archaeopteryx and modern birds, but textbooks tend to present it as the missing link anyway. As stated clearly notes in a video entitled Science vs. the Ark Encounter, Episode 2, Archaeopteryx, the Archaeopteryx has been described as a reptile-like bird or a bird-like reptile because the Archaeopteryx is a transitional genus. Archaeopteryx displays both bird traits and reptilian traits. In the video, a point that Perry makes really drove this notion home. The idea of Archaeopteryx being a transitional fossil and it concerns the tail. Archaeopteryx has a long bony tail, as you can see in the photo, with feathers that come from each vertebrae. Modern birds, on the other hand, have what Perry calls a nubby bone that the tail feathers grow off from. One cannot fail to see the transition. The peppered moth is a famous icon of evolution uh, in which uh, moths supposedly changed color during the Industrial Revolution because uh, they were dark moths were better camouflaged on soot darkened tree trunks and the birds couldn't see them and so they ate the light moths and left the dark ones. And uh, this is still used in many textbooks as a, a classic example of natural selection in action when in fact biologists discovered in the 1980s that peppered moths don't rest on tree trunks in the wild at all, or normally. And so uh, the textbook pictures have all been staged and the story has serious flaws. The story of the peppered moth is an interesting one. And as a layperson, it's one for some odd reason I've basically have followed since high school. So you're talking 30 years or so. A book that I had the pleasure of reading back in 2000 or so by Michael Meharis called Melanism Evolution in Action makes clear the peppered moth story 
has changed or I would say it's been refined especially in recent years post Wells's book but Meharis's book should have been something that Wells was aware of when he wrote icons the nitty-gritty in reality, the story of the pepper moth is neither faked nor incorrect. It was previously believed the changes in the colors of the moth as an example of natural selection, in which the soul factor had been shown to be predation by birds. Currently, as of today, it's considered that the changes in the colors of the moss as an example of natural selection in which one factor is predation by birds. The rest of Ketterwell's experiments and observations still stand. Darwin's finches, another icon of evolution, are uh, 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 some species of birds on the Galapagos Islands that are very similar except for the size and shape of their beaks. And it's thought, and it's quite possible, that they evolved from a common ancestor because of uh, having to eat different foods on the different islands. But the actual evidence uh, shows us only that the beaks can change uh, over a matter of years uh, based on climate and diet. But the changes are temporary, they oscillate back and forth, and they don't go anywhere. So. As evidence for the origin of species, Darwin's finches uh, really don't work. I will be honest. I have never heard this criticism before, at least in the terms that Wells states. I'm kind of at a loss as to how to approach this, other than from a very general point of view. If I get the gist of what Wells states, it seems to boil down to the old canard that adaption is not evolution. I could be wrong. I could be totally misunderstanding what was stated. But when I hear creationists make this claim, I believe what they mean is flexibility, acclimatization, and learning are not evolution which is true. Adaption, on the other hand, is a evolutionary process whereby an organism becomes better able to live in its habitat. Based on what Wells seems to claim, this is what I, myself, think he's saying. A. Finches are similar except for the size and shape of the beaks. What I think he ignores is the behavioral differences, as an example. B, the finches are thought to share common ancestry. What I think he ignores is all the genetic data. And C, the Galapagos finches are used to demonstrate macroevolution. From my understanding, no, they're not. They are used to demonstrate natural selection due to environmental variation or pressures. Overall, my understanding of Darwin's finches comes to this. The importance of Darwin's findings show that natural selection can cause large morphological changes over a fairly brief period of time. Modern genetics has demonstrated the existence of several distinct ones, all derived from a single ancestral stock. And this is exactly what evolutionary theory would predict. As with the peppered moth, Darwin's finches are still under study even today, even as I record. That is the beauty of evolutionary theory and science as a whole. It never stops. So, again, time is an issue, so yes, there will be a part three, and we'll finish out the remaining 
icons that Jonathan Wells thinks are failures. Stay smart.